speaking of player habits, I was thinking we could talk about how the DM encourages and discourages certain player habits through gameplay, uh, through setting up certain scenarios for the players to navigate, uh, and uh, discouraging certain choices when they feel that it's appropriate and encouraging certain choices when they feel it's appropriate. And this is actually tying into something um, that is presented uh, pretty quickly in an intro psych class. Um, we like this is a this is a board game, but psychology is still very prevalent, especially when it comes to good storytelling. If you ask me, so what we're talking about here is the concept of reinforcement and punishment. Reinforcement is the increase of a certain behavior through a stimulus. Punishment is decreasing a certain behavior through a stimulus. These stimuli can be positive or negative. A positive stimulus is the addition of that stimulus. A negative uh, stimulus is the removal of the stimulus. So you can have positive and negative reinforcement and positive and negative punishment, which a lot of people tend to uh, get a little confused because whenever we talk about punishment, like, yeah, it's always decreasing, uh, decreasing a behavior. Like it's like, no, no, bad. Don't do that. But we never really think about these two, two sides of the coin, the positive and negative side of the coin. And so what I think is interesting is that when the DM sets up an encounter and sets up certain solutions to the encounter, uh, they can include this kind of uh, mindset when they're doing so in order to create better player habits but not like not just like training <laughs> I'm not talking about like you're brainwashing your players into doing some stuff it's like we know that this is a for example say a player is really disruptive all the time uh, and they're always butting into other people's turns just to say something uh, something flavorful for example it's somebody else's turn and they're like, all right, I'm going to load my, you know, I'm going to load my crossbow because I have to do that. And then the other player comes in and it's like, I, I whistle and say, good luck, good luck shooting at this guy. Yeah, you could do it. <laughs> and it's like, okay, thanks. But I got to load my crossbow. <laughs> and, uh, and that's like a disruptive behavior, a very simple disruptive behavior. They get much worse than that. <laughs> and uh, maybe you want to, maybe you want to, Psychologically speaking, the word you would use, you want to punish that player to discourage the behavior, not, it sounds bad, but I promise it's not, it's just the language. Um, <laughs> and so what you could do is you can either add a stimulus that will discourage that behavior. For example, um, I don't know, a mechanical disadvantage or, or something like that. Uh, that would be, I wouldn't do that. Like there's, it's very situational, but, well just to cut in for a second, I mean, yeah, the other, sure, sure, sure. being the disruptive person, um, <laughs> like that would be like a positive, pun a positive punishment would also be like the DM telling them to knock it off. Right. And then they would be embarrassed by it ideally. So yeah. that that's what discourages them from disrupting again, is they don't want to be embarrassed in front of everybody or whatever. Yeah. That, that's actually a much better <laughs> example. This is why I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Cause I thought you might have some good examples. Um, a negative punishment would be to remove a stimulus, which will decrease the behavior. Now, when we talk about children, uh, usually it's like you take away their favorite toy because they were bad and you're giving them a negative stimulus to take away, to, to res eh, remove that behavior. It's, <laughs> this is going to take some thinking, like it did in well, psychology class. I mean, a negative class. stimulus would be, like, what if they were being stealthy? You are now removing their stealth. Because mm. they shouted out to, like, the, the person with the crossbow, hey, good luck with that, dude! And the guard turns their head and, and responds to that sound. You've now removed their stealth. Or, man, I had a natural 20 on stealth. I whisper, or I, I, sorry, I whistle and I, I call out to, to this person, hey, good luck on that. There goes that natural 20 <laughs> stealth. You've removed that. Um, well, that I, awesome I think victory. that would still technically be a positive punishment hmm. um, okay. because you're, you're adding something to their game state. Like you're acknowledging them. Whereas I feel like, like a negative punishment would be you're, you're removing the time you give them to speak, right? Would that would that be more what how it how it's in line? Because uh, positive and negative is like not necessarily taking away from the game state, but like 
Yeah. You're, so, you're removing hmm. something, right? Yeah, it, it's a little confusing. Like I said, punishment, like we always think it's like a negative thing, but there's positive ones too. And and yeah, that, that could be another, that could be a possibility. Let's see here, because uh, I have a little table. Could, that tells it, could it also me, be taking their phones away at the table? So like if somebody's texting or playing games, you make a yeah. rule that you can't have, be, have your phone. So that takes away from the unwanted behavior of like playing games instead of paying attention. So now, yeah. does that, is that, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, actually that's, that's quite correct. Um, so like on my little table here, it says something is removed to decrease the likelihood of a behavior. When you're, the, with the stealth example, that would be positive punishment because you're adding the fact that the guard can see them now. So it, it's, it's a little wonky. And that's why I thought we would talk about it because, uh, you know, we, we talk all the time about encouraging or discouraging player habits, but there is a real psychological study of, of how that is done, how behavioral uh, influence is, is created. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad we're talking about it now because I, even I was confused. This was like two years ago when I was in the intro psych, so. <laughs> well, it's interesting too, because I guess the other question to ask is what's the threshold that makes it, what makes it, what's the line between a negative punishment and a negative enforcement? Because like, let's go back to taking their phones away at the table, you know, now you're also, you're not only are you decreasing the unwanted behavior of them texting instead of paying attention, you're also increasing the behavior of them paying attention. So like, at what point are we looking at this where a lot of these things start to overlap, you know? Yeah, and it's, it's a little bit, I, I guess you could say it's kind of binary at first. Like you really don't want to have too many factors. You just want the reinforcement or punishment, or wait a minute, you want the stimulus and you want it to, and you want the behavior. Those are the two, that, that's how this is, this is based on uh, behavioralism. Uh, in, uh, for example, Pavlov's own experiments in training dogs to salivate when they hear a bell. That's, that's through this kind of a system. So when you start adding more factors, it becomes much more complex. So really you have to resolve each individual behavior and stimulus as they come up, but you have to start somewhere. And that's like the whole goal. So the difference between negative punishment and negative reinforcement is both are removing something from the, from the system. Uh, the reinforcement increases the behavior, punishment decreases the behavior. A real world example of negative reinforcement is wearing your seatbelt after you've been nagged by your car's beeping noise to wear your seatbelt. When you put your seatbelt on, the noise goes away, negative reinforcement. <laughs> because when we say negative and positive, and this is one thing that often confuses people, even myself, of course, these are not qualitative you know, concepts. They're just the fact that uh, you are adding or removing adding or subtracting, what's the word? Um, empirical, uh, <laughs> that's the word. These are empirical concepts, not qualitative. Um, yeah, quantitative is the other word for it. <laughs> so like, as opposed to good or bad is my point. Positive and negative is not good or bad in this sense. It is uh, the addition or subtraction of something. Well, you're, uh, let's go back to that Witcher example where, uh, where uh, Geralt was it? I'm sorry, I don't know the characters. Uh, Geralt with a heart Geralt. G. Ah, Geralt. So let's go back to the Witcher example, where Geralt has this weird tattoo on his face that burns whenever he does something that is not in line with the other creature's thing, which by the way is, uh, is a, uh, a positive punishment. Well, and that's <laughs> what I was gonna say, is you brought up the seatbelt example, and that's what I mean by this is, this, this is a psychological, there is a scientific study here, but there's also a philosophical study, because mm. at what point is the negative reinforcement also based on a positive punishment? Because when you're not wearing your seatbelt and your alarm is going off, that's a positive punishment. And then the behavior is negatively reinforced when you put your seatbelt on and it stops. So yeah. I think there is just like a tighter relationship between a lot of these that makes it harder to like create a hard distinction between a lot of them. And yeah. you had mentioned before Ian, before we started recording about neuro-linguistic programming, and one of the things a lot of positive psychologists talk about is the value of framing your language in a positive light in terms of the qualitative, which is good versus bad, as opposed to 
the addition or subtraction of something, which is what you're talking about with positive and negative. So I do think that the language, the language can play an interesting role in how a DM designs in their reinforcement and their punishments <laughs> into their game setting. Thank you so much for listening to some of our podcast highlights. This podcast is part of the Darkmoor Podcast Network. If you want to support the content creators, feel free to visit our Patreon. And please, game responsibly.